Hey guys, welcome back to Andy's Dinosaur Reviews, and today we have another Mattel Jurassic World figure to take a look at, another epic evolution figure. As you can see, we've got ourselves the very first ever Danger Pack 2-pack, because we've never had two figures included in one set before. We have the Eoraptor versus Stegoros, and this looks like a really cool set, honestly. Definitely two really fun species, and I certainly did not expect a Stegoros to come from Mattel anytime soon, but definitely excited to see it included. This uh, Eoraptor, you know, I could have considered that one. I could have seen that one coming maybe at some point, but for some reason the Stegoros was just a really nice surprise to me. But you can see the box art again. It's pretty much as it usually is, and you can see here on the back we've basically not pretty much nothing going on except for some images of the other figures in this wave. So let's pop this box open and check it out. So here is our Eoraptor who is trying to run, I think. There we go. We've got the Eoraptor in a better position and we've also got the Stegoros here as well. We'll go ahead and turn that one I guess in the opposite position that we saw in the packaging. I think they were both facing the other way. I don't know. I can't really remember. But uh, you can very clearly see again these figures are pretty small. They're probably like half the size of your normal sort of you know attack pack wild pack danger pack type figure they're definitely small they look to be very similar in size to the mattel lystrosaurus if you do happen to have that one in your collection especially of course the stegoros i would say they're very similar in size to that but again they look really nice but the only way to really tell how nice is with a closer look so let's jump to it right now so we'll begin with our Eoraptor, and one thing that's cool about this figure is this is a Triassic species, and I had just reviewed the Paposaurus, which is also a Triassic species, so it's very cool to see more Triassic, you know, animals coming from Mattel. Definitely a really nice one. This is actually one of the earliest known dinosaurs, I believe, so really exciting as far as that goes, which is funny as far as the set goes, because we've got a Triassic dinosaur but we also have a cretaceous dinosaur with the stegoros so in uh, real life these two would have never in a well many millions of years met but in jurassic world i guess it's okay because again they're all kind of brought to modern time but you can see the head sculpt looks pretty nice again some decent looking detailing here in the face some kind of large scaling there in the face you can see a yellow eye the pupil, unfortunately, is a reddish tone, which is the coloration we have for the head, and I definitely would have preferred a black coloration for the pupil. It's not the end of the world, but it could have certainly been better. We do have an articulated jaw, which you can see the teeth. There's only a few of them in there, and uh, they're okay looking. The teeth on the upper jaw, they look all right. Teeth on the lower jaw look a little goofy, if you ask me, but again, they're not terrible or anything like that. You can see we do... Have some detail on the inside of the mouth on the upper side, but it is the same reddish tone as the head. But we do have a nice pink for the tongue and then a pink for the little skin there on the inside of the mouth where the mouth opens back here. But that's really about it as far as the inside of the mouth goes. Pretty decent articulated jaw, works pretty smoothly. As you move up here into the back of the head, we have some very interesting, I guess they're quills. I don't know what they were going for when it comes to this appearance in this area of the dinosaur it's very interesting looking that's for sure but you can see they kind of run down in two different rows on each side of the neck moving down we continue to have that reddish tone moving down in the neck as we lead down into the body you can see we transition from the red the red kind of runs down here and sort of leaks out into the body but you can see the rest of the body is then a greenish tone and the red kind of not only runs out here it also runs down into the arms as you move down the arms you can see some nice looking scale detail actually as well as some muscle definition and then you've also got some nicely sculpted hands and fingers down here for the EO Raptor you've got some pretty uh, long claws as well for the dinosaur you do have articulation in the arms which can go forward and back but one thing that is unfortunate that I didn't notice until just now is even though I thought we actually had an articulated neck we don't it's actually completely you know stuck there so I assume that that means that there is no articulated neck it kind of has like a jagged appearance as well so I can't see it swiveling and uh, definitely isn't moving forward or you know up or down or anything like that so no articulation in the neck which is kind of surprising but as you move up into the body you can see we've got some really nice very vibrant scale detail you can also see there is a speckling on the figure showing up here and there you've got some osteoderms up here at the top of the hip and thigh and everything leading back here into the tail as you lead down the course of 
of the leg. You have some nice muscle definition present. We've got the knee as well as a pretty decent looking foot sculpt. Nice scoops down the toes. Nicely sculpted nails. There are dew claws. Of course, none of the nails on this figure are painted. You can see the nails in the hands are a reddish tone. And the nails of the feet are a greenish tone because those are the colors of those areas. Again, as far as the arm being red, the legs being green. It kind of looks like we might have a slight scent and shine for the nails, but... Uh, that's not even a guarantee. It just kind of looks like we do. But as we move back up here, you can see again some more very reptilian style scaling as we lead out the length of the tail. You can see there's no alternate coloration outside of the green and the speckling that is pretty much uh, abundant all over this figure. You can see a pretty nice little curve as you lead out through the length of the tail though. And then of course we've got the Jurassic Facts app code here. If you would like to add the EO Raptor to your collection, there you go. You're not really going to see a whole lot as far as difference goes over here. Again, it looks pretty much the same. Pretty straightforward. The only real difference is the fact that the leg is now leading on this side compared to trailing on the initial side. You can see everything looks pretty much the same. We do have a swivel for the tail. Don't think I mentioned that quite yet. And then the detailing on the underside also looks nice, but there's no real color variation moving through pretty much the majority of the figure. So... It is pretty cool to have an EO Raptor figure, I cannot lie, definitely not the best one that we'll ever see, but it's still kind of fun. And then we've got ourselves the Stegoros. Now, as far as this set goes, in my opinion, this one here is the better figure because this looks really nice. You've got a gorgeous head sculpt here. He looks actually quite adorable, but at the same time, maybe a little grumpy. You can see we've got a nicely painted eye with an orange. We don't have a black pupil for this one either. We have a, you know, green, basically the dark green as far as what we see on the body. You can see that there is a variation of color here for the beak which looks really nice, a different coloration there. You can also see the nostrils sculpted out, as well as some kind of cracks and crevices within the beak. And the beak also has a little bit of a satin shine to it, which is nice. We also have this very light green here kind of moving through the face. It kind of stripes down under the eye, sort of splotches in a few places, and then leads back into the body. As you lead up here to the top of the head, everything detail-wise looks really nice. We've got some beautiful scale detail. You also have the bumps and everything here uh, moving along, something that you do see all over this dinosaur. Looks like we have articulation in the neck on this one as well, but no, definitely not going anywhere. So I guess there's just no articulation because we don't have an articulated jaw, no articulation in the neck. I don't know why they wouldn't have at least given it a swivel right there in the neck region, but they did not. As you move back here into the body, you can see a pretty nicely sculpted front leg here. You've got some of those kind of large scoot-like scales here, those armored scales moving down the side of the leg. You can see the elbow back there, as well as a pretty nice foot sculpt. And even though we don't have painted nails, there absolutely is a bit of a satin shine on this one, definitely kind of making it look like it has painted nails, which is a plus. And then you lead up into the body and you can see that light green kind of disappears before we even reach the hip region. And then that is gone. And then we lead back into the rear leg. You can see a few more of those kind of osteoderms and stuff poking up those school like scales moving down the side. A little bit of an armored sort of a look to the front of the leg moving down from the knee into the shin. And then you again have a nice looking foot sculpt with the nails having that kind of satin shine just like we saw on the front leg. And then as we move back up here into the tail... We do have a swivel tail, so that's a plus at least. And then as you lead out here toward the end of the tail, you can see a little extra color variation as we have kind of like a light green, very different shade of light green compared to that stripe. But, you know, it is nice to see a little extra coloration on the figure. Same deal for the underside of that area. Nothing else really going on, it looks like, as far as the coloration goes. We do have articulation, though, in the legs again, forward and back for both the front and rear legs. Same deal going again. No uh, articulation moving out away from the body. It's very basic when it comes to the articulation of these figures. You're going to see again pretty much the same thing over here on the opposing side. Like I said, no real big differences from one side to the other, especially considering the legs are almost in, a, almost dropped it, but almost in a neutral position. Like they're really not too far off from each other. Maybe just slightly uh, different from the other side, but definitely a really cool figure. Let's grab the Facts app here. Again, the code for you guys. If you would like to add the Stegoros to your collection, there you go. But uh, even though it has very, very limited and basic articulation, I actually really quite like this one. As far as a size goes for a length on our Stegoros, about four and a half inches or around 11 and a half centimeters for a height. The highest point would be the tail. You're a little under 
uh, an inch and three quarters. I would say actually closer to, oh, look at that. So just a hair actually over an inch and a half or around four centimeters. And then for the EO Raptor, obviously it's going to be a little bit taller, but lengthwise, it's definitely a little bit longer as well. You can see about five and a quarter inches or around 13 uh, about 13 and a half centimeters, maybe a little bit under. And then for a height in the position it's in, about two and a half inches or around six and a half centimeters. For a size comparison, there is Mr. Papo T Rex, the Attack Pack Colovosaurus, Robert Muldoon, and the Collect Day human being here next to our Mattel Eel Raptor and Stegoros. And you can see they are definitely quite small, especially when you pretty much take everything else here out of the screen that we have here and then you just basically look at the size difference between these two and the colovasaurus you can see uh you know this again this is basically like an attack pack and a danger pack which would be normally the same size range and you can see a pretty massive difference in size between these two figures we've also got a mattel velociraptor because it's probably one of the most not only sold figures by Mattel, but also one of the most popular that like people have lots of usually in their collection would be Mattel Raptors, just to kind of give you another idea again of the fact that these are quite small. And then for one final comparison, because I don't feel like we need too many here, the Lystrosaurus from Mattel has now stepped in for a comparison next to the Eoraptor and Stegoros, and you can see pretty similar in size to the Lystrosaurus, which is one of the smallest, you know, mainline Mattel uh, figures that we have, uh, you know, outside of human beings and the compies and stuff like that. But uh, if you are familiar with the size of the Lystrosaurus, you can see that they're kind of similar in size to the new Danger Pack, Eoraptor, and Stegoros. So this brand new Mattel Jurassic World Epic Evolution Danger Pack Eoraptor versus Stegoros set is really cool. And honestly, I hope they continue to do this into the future. I would love to see Mattel release more two packs of smaller species like this. Because you look at them and I guess you think, well, you know, an Eoraptor or a Stegoros are both pretty small. You don't really want to release them individually because it's not really fair to the person purchasing them unless they're way cheaper. So why not take two small species and combine them into one release? In my opinion, it's honestly quite quite genius on the part of Mattel and again as I said I really hope they do more of this moving forward but both figures are pretty fun I think the EO Raptor is probably the weaker of the two even though it is a nice looking figure it's just not really that great I think the one thing that kind of uh not really kills that one but takes away from it for me would be the red pupil just really bothers me I much would have preferred a black pupil and the fact that there is no neck articulation is a little bit of a bummer for that one because it really was quite unnecessary we definitely could have easily had neck articulation in that I mean look at the Lystrosaurus pretty much the same size as these figures and that had very nice neck articulation outside of that though the figure looks pretty cool they have a fun paint scheme for it not anything amazing because there's not all that much color for the figure but but it looks okay for what it is and you know not having neck articulation is a bit of a bummer but the articulation through the rest of the figure works pretty nicely it's pretty smooth on top of that we also have the stegoros the stegoros is definitely my favorite from this set i really like that figure i think the sculpt is quite gorgeous and the paint apps are uh, really nicely done as well i like seeing paint from head to tail on that one definitely a plus for that figure same deal as far as the articulation goes no neck articulation but the rest of the articulation is pretty smooth and the fact that the body is a dark green and the pupil is the dark green you know is a little bit of a downside i would again would have preferred a black pupil but the fact that the body is that dark green makes the pupil look a little bit more natural than what we see on the eo raptor so overall this is definitely a really fun set from mattel and even though the figures have a little bit of like a downside as far as a few things like the pupil and the neck articulation they're both really fun additions to my collection so if you are interested make sure you check your local walmart as that's where they are beginning to show up right now and also like comment and subscribe and i will see you in the next review thanks for watching